Five, five, four, three, two. Hey everybody, Scott with Killer Minis Painting and Gaming. Real excited. Today we're gonna do Firefly Adventures. Just received this in the mail the other day and I played a test run through, went through the rules, and I wanna get something out to you guys right away. So let's go ahead and get stuck in. All right, so let's take a look at the starting crew. Obviously, if you're familiar with the Firefly universe, all these characters should be familiar. So we have Jane, Kaylee, Mal, Wash, and down here, if I can just get it in focus, is Zoe. I've already gone through, um, if you look in the rule booklet, that basically to get your starting equipment, you get a certain number of money and then you go through and do a random card selection. So I focused on trying to pick equipment that's going to help me um, from a technical aspect and a little less uh, aggressive as far as shooting. So Kaylee has a Cortex uplink and a reprogrammer. Both of these are gonna give her um, tech buffs, as you can see the blue symbols. Uh, Jane has the holdout pistol, so it'll give him some excuse me some early range capability Mal if you can see the series got a revolver and uh, he also has this thing called plastic dinosaurs down here which basically um, will allow people a reroll and Zoe has a revolver as well and we'll get into how we utilize those later and what that means for us but basically yeah, I mean, your your ranged items are going to improve your... It's the only way that you can shoot from a distance, um, as far as I know. You have to have that piece of equipment, and it gives you the range skill. Um, so, yeah. So, you can see we're not really very beefed up. Now, the scenario that we're playing is the rescue mission. <laughs> so, basically, this setup, you can see a lot of buildings around. Each one of the buildings, there's an objective token. We have to go through and kind of look in each building or ascertain some intel on those buildings to find out if one of our friends that we're coming to rescue is being held hostage in that room. Once we locate his, uh, his location, for lack of a better word, um, then we need to hightail it here to the helipad, and then we win the scenario. Um, so yeah, just as a short note, I've already played through this once. And I went through Guns of Blazing, only to find out that really the way that they're assigning victory points for the game um, and the amount of time that it will take you once you start engaging these people, it's really not the way to play this scenario. The best way is probably more of a balance between um, sneaking around and subterfuge and uh, maybe a little bit of aggression if you, can, if you have to. So... Um, there's a bad guy here at this building. We call them goons. These are all cowboys. The cowboy here, cowboy there, and a cowboy there. And that should be it. one, two, three, four. Oh, actually, nope. There's one way down here. So there's five total cowboys. Um, now basically, in the game, the cowboys are the guys that can shoot you at range. And then you also have um, thugs. And thugs are your melee guys. So those are the, the two that you're going to encounter. So we're pretty much just going to get stuck in. Um, the turn order is very... The turn order is very free-flowing. And what I mean by that is an, unlike, say, your classic zombie side where Kaylee would go and then Jane would go and there would be this clockwise, counterclockwise thing going on. You have this tracker that I'm trying to get into focus here. It's going from... Um, you can't see it now. It goes from 1 to 10, basically, up here. And everything that you perform in the game costs a number of minutes. So what we'll do here is I'll show you a copy of uh, Mal's card. So you can see in the, in the right the, the little stopwatch icon. So the very first one is for two time, or in this game it's called moments. For two moments, you could move three squares. For one moment, you could get plus one to treat uh, heroic negotiation test as casual, so that's a buff. So you either have a, a boost 
or just an action performance. And you can tell that because there'll be a plus there. So the next one below is one moment for uh, out of sight of goons, you could heal a blood. So if he takes damage, he could heal one if he's out of sight of the goons. Uh, two moments, move another crew to spaces. That's pretty cool. Or spend two moments to assist if available. And we'll get into that uh, a little bit later. So let's get back to the zoom in screen here. So basically what's happening is as you're moving, you're spending time in the scenario. You're going up this ladder. If you land on another counter, you cover them up. And that's how that goes. And we'll discover the rest of it as we move along. I don't want to get too bogged down in rules here. So right now, everybody is on the one space. And they're actually stacked up. So the topmost token is actually what's considered furthest back in the time track. So they would go first. And that's kind of the rule. Whoever's furthest back, it's like an initiative order for an RPG, right? So, um, yeah. So Kaylee's going to go first. And then after she goes, say she spends a couple moments, then Wash would be the furthest behind, so he would go next. And you, as you can see, this turn order just keeps evolving. And what's interesting is that later on, when you activate the enemies, they show up on this time tracker as well, and that determines when they're going to attack you. It's really a very cool mechanism. Um, when I first looked at it, I thought it, was, it might be a bit clunky, but now as, as I've played it, I really dig it. So we're going to start off with Kaylee and see what she can get done here. Um, back to the overhead view, just to give you an idea of my tactics. Like I said, we have to search every one of these buildings. Um, but this particular building right here actually has um, a, a terminal in it. Let's see if I can get you a, a better view of that. There we go. So there's a terminal counter in here. So once I can get Kaylee in here, one space adjacent to that terminal, she can start, um, according to the scenario rules, she can start eliminating and getting intel on these other buildings, right? And that's gonna eliminate our possible buildings to find our hostage. The other thing that we can do is just open the door and peek in, but there's a problem with that and there's a danger to that as well. Um, basically, when you peek in, you have to roll a die and you can get results that will an enemy will show up. You get negative results. It's kind of like an event action, right? Um, so, and if you get a really good roll, you might find your hostage in there. So at least you can find your hostage, you have a chance. But when you're doing the technical um, test, the tech test to gather intel around the buildings, you're just eliminating one of the possible options. You'll see how that works. The other thing that we can do is we can also go up to the goons and we can interrogate them. Um, and that's the same thing I believe as the tech where it eliminates. Basically we just remove one of the objectives in a random fashion. I'll show you how that works. So we'll start it off. Kaylee is down the bottom order and let's go to her character card here. See if I can get it up for you. Care, uh, Kaylee casual, okay. So she can spend two moments to move up to three. Now in this game, you can move diagonally. Yeah, as you see, everything's grid-based. Um, so she's gonna go, let me give you a better, trying real hard here with these angles. So Kaylee's gonna move diagonal for one, and then she'll move ahead to the door which is the next space, it's kind of hard for you to see, but right here adjacent is a door. And then with her third move, she's gonna go ahead and step on inside. Now that's important because it's gonna put her adjacent to the terminal, which she can now use. And secondarily, anytime you're in a space that's adjacent to a door, either outside or inside, you're kind of in the same space for line of sight. Um, so yeah, I want to maintain, just to let you know, I'm trying to maintain line of sight with Wash because Wash has an ability that will allow him to basically assist her uh, in some of her actions. So what I'll do is I'll bring up Wash's card for you. So you can see all the way down at the bottom, second from the bottom, 
uh, for two moments assist any visible crew in a technical test if available right so as you can see I've kind of planned this out so Kaylee um, since she moved let me go back to this so she moved she spent two moments right so we move her two on the track and then we moved her on the board this is moving on the track supposed to happen after you perform the action so we moved we talked a little bit here so now that Wash's counter is exposed he's the only other character right now available to assist and normally when you assist the only way that you can do that is if you're adjacent but remember Wash has this ability he can see her right through the door so anyhow um, it's Kaylee's turn and on your turn you perform two actions and that's a max and it's it's also a may action so you can perform one you can perform nothing you can perform both both of them but we do want to do something with Kaylee here so before she does the second action though we do have to resolve the fact that there's an objective token in her square so I'm going to refer to the scenario instructions okay so basically every time you enter the building and you pick up the objective from the building then you have to draw a random tile each one of these tiles is marked by number that matches one of the buildings so what you're doing is you're trying to find the location of the hostage um, and she's picking up the objective to see hey is that the hostage so we draw a token and the number is five so the building she's in is seven so we didn't find the hostage but we have two other options if the if the token number is one away from the building we're in which we're not five and seven the building is seven that's two away um, if it was one away we would place a cargo crate and a thug which is kind of cool but it's more than one away so the building is basically empty so now we take this five and it actually goes back in and we have to find the building that we're in the number seven token and remove it so you see basically what that did was eliminate this building from our draw pile so now anytime we do this again we could possibly we could possibly find the hostage if we draw the tile that matches the building so in this case we had a one in ten chance um, and we didn't get it but with every building that we eliminate we're going to increase our chances so anyhow that was a free action basically for her finding the objective as far as I'm aware that's how that works it doesn't cost you so she still has another action available so we're gonna take a look at her card here and yeah so this time she's gonna perform her technical challenge on the terminal now as specified by the scenario instructions she can perform intel gathering so attempt a technical challenge while next to a terminal if successful take an intel token and then once you have that intel token you can discard it and anytime you may discard an intel token reveal a face down numbered token yeah and so that's what's in our bin right here so I guess if you wanted you could rack up the Intel tokens and then just dump them all at once um, I'm not sure we would do that I think we're just gonna discard them as we gain them so we're gonna go into doing a technical challenge now so see if I can get my screen up here for you this camera is a little I got two webcams that don't like each other so over here um, this is a technical technical pile so basically we just draw a card for head moment of the day so ultrasonic alarm so she can either diffuse the alarm or disable the system so if she's heroic she can roll a die and try to get a nine and it only cost one so it's quicker or she can take her time and still roll one die but she's got to get a 10 well to be honest with you I think what we're gonna do 
is I think that she's going to go ahead and, and switch into heroic mode. And I'll show you why. Um, let's go here and take a look at heroic. Heroic Kaylee. So her heroic side, she gets for two extra moments, she can add a die to her skill test or her tech test. Um, plus, I can ignore a critical result of a tech test if I want. Now, the funny thing is I think you have to... I don't know. I don't know if you have to spend that before or after. It is a buff. But I think if you roll and then decide, oh, I want to ignore that, I think there's not, no harm in doing that. Um, so, yeah, and it's going to take her three to act casual, as you can see. So, basically, the first thing we're going to do is put her in heroic mode. So, we're going to change out her figure with a little green figure. And that's a visual identifier to let us know that she's in heroic mode. In addition, we've also flipped over her card, which uh, is off screen, but I'll show you the still. And there's her heroic. So she is going to add two more moments to go ahead and add a die to her test, right? So looking back at the card, so her test, it's a one die test, but now she'll have two. And she can add her tech skill. So I tell you what, she's not going to add that extra die. She's going to roll with one die, and I'll tell you why. So she's going to roll one die, but she's going to get plus three on her character card. Plus, remember, she does have she does have these two pieces of equipment here that's going to give her an extra three. I tell you what, we're going to make it even more complicated. <laughs> so the reprogrammer, with a cost of one moment, it allows her to treat a heroic test as a casual tech test. So back to this card, we're going to do this heroic for one moment, and it only requires a nine. It, we're going to have to add an extra moment just to do that because it's a, it's a buff. So let me get you back in screen. So she's going to add one plus one for this test that she's doing. That's where we're at so far. So now the reprogrammer is going to give her plus one. This gives her plus two, plus her character card is three. So she's going to get a plus six to her roll. And she needs a nine, right? So right now that means if she gets a three or better, she's going to pass this test. But wait, there's more. <laughs> it gets better, right? So remember Wash. Um, Wash is going to assist her at any time for three moments. Uh, Wash, if available, can add a die to the visible crew's test. So he's going to do that. So we'll go ahead and move Wash one, two, three up in the timeline. That costs him three moments. It didn't cost her. So now she gets to roll an extra an extra die, basically. So I know that was a little complicated. Sorry about that for the first turn, but it is what it is. So now we're rolling two dice. She gets plus six to the roll, and all she needs is a nine. So, yeah, we should be able to pass this, no problem. Okay, so she totally passed it. She got nine plus the nine. But remember, um, in this game, had she have rolled a critical fail... It, would have, it wouldn't have mattered how, what the number was. We still would have failed the test. Um, but in, in this case, Kaylee does have the ability to ignore that result by, by spending one more moment. And whether or not you can do that after the roll, I'm not 100%. Um, you know, I guess if to be safe, you just like a, I don't know, a re-roll. You, you roll and then you go, hey, I want to re-roll that. So you spend and then you re-roll. So I think that'd be the same thing for the critical fail. Now, the only way if you had a critical that you could cancel that out is if you had the, uh, the Firefly symbol. Um, then that would be a null, right? And actually, the Firefly on the, set, on the spare note is also an exploding die. So if you roll this and hit that, it's a six. You roll again, and you can just keep exploding over and over. So it's pretty cool. The dice mechanic's really neat. I'm telling you, they got a lot of really neat stuff thrown in this game. Best of a lot. A lot of really good mechanics that I've seen in, in different games and some that I haven't. So anyhow, we pass this test, and so that we go down on your success. All visible crew may act casual. 
Um, hmm. So I could turn her to casual if I wanted, but we're not going to. We're going to keep her heroic because she's out of sight anyway. Um, and I'll more on that in a moment. Plus, if you look at her character card here, she has more ability to help herself do this terminal thing. So we ask ourselves, why was she doing this terminal test to begin with? Well, now that we've successfully done this, she's successfully done a terminal action. And according to the scenario, it will tell you that we now get an Intel token. So I'll grab one just to show you. Okay, there's the Intel token. So we've earned one of these. But we're going to just turn this in right away. And that's going to allow us to grab from our bag, right? Let me uh, change screens real quick here. Okay, because I don't want to look in it. Okay, and we draw a number three. So basically, Kaylee was able to ascertain that, and where's number three? Um, da -da. Is this number three? Oop, bump the camera. That's number two. Okay, so number three is down here. So I'm going to remove the objective token from number three. So we now know that our hostage that we're trying to rescue is not in that building. So in this case, we don't put that back into the cup, right? Only when we're in the building. So we've already eliminated number seven and number three, and that's these two right here. And I can discard this card. So we know that the hostage has to be in one of the other buildings. And now that'll be Kaylee's turn done. She's already done two of her actions. So that should do it for her. Um, so let's take a look at the time track here. So now Kaylee's in the lead. We have Wash and Zoe. And before I jump too far ahead, what you're supposed to do at the end of a character's activation is you're supposed to go ahead and do a, uh, a check for basically your AI check. And what that is, is do any of the goons see a heroic character? And if they do, then they become activated. We take one of their little tokens and we put it on the timeline with the rest of the crew. But in this case, we only have one heroic character, but she's actually in a, ooh, I take that back. She is visible because, she, ooh, I forgot that. So part of the disadvantage of having Wash there to maintain her visibility, now I do believe, uh, because basically this space here is the same as this space there. You can shoot out of and shoot into people right inside the doorway, and they make a very clear um classification the rules for that it's a very they're calling it straight out like that's the term in the doorway is this square or that square so that means right now that Kaylee's visible by this goon so he's actually going to become activated so we take uh, let's see take one of the cowboy things and basically we put it in the end of the time track which will be right on top of Zoe so Zoe was supposed to go next, but now it's going to basically be this cowboy that's on top of us. So this is going to be bad news. Um, this is going to be really bad news, and I hope I don't just straight up die. So he is going to get two activations. So basically, the gist of what's happened is um, as soon as they start acting heroically, all of a sudden, you know, the guards are like, hey, there's the enemy, you know, but when they're casual, they're just kind of strolling around, they're mi they're mingling with the rest of the population, they, they're they not really being, you know, uh, they are being conspicuous, you know, they're, they're not drawing attention, and uh, basically the goons are not identifying them as the enemy, but once you act heroic and you're shooting things, you're beating people up, you're doing things that are aggressive, they're like, hey, there they are, get them. So that's basically the gist of it. It's, it's a cool mechanic. Um, so this dude here, he's one, two, three, four, five. And I believe, yeah, he's definitely far enough away to shoot. If we look at his card here, this is his AI card. So um, the first 
condition is if he's more than six away from the target, he's going to move to get in range. Um, if he's within six inches, it's going to cost him three moments to shoot with one die and his fight skill. So I believe, yeah, we're, we're playing all these guys as standard. There are two wounds and I believe one fight. So what's going to happen here is he's going to get two actions to kind of shoot at Kaylee. <laughs> um, not good. So the way you do ranged is you count the how far away you are. One, two, three, four, five. So she, uh, this cowboy needs to pass a test and get five or better. Now his fight skill um, also gives him a plus one. Because the way we're playing the game is all the cowboys are just regular cowboys. They have two health, and they have one fight skill. There isn't a the other rule where, let me see, when you flip over their token, they become a specific kind of cowboy. And uh, it makes it a little harder, a little more. I just wanted to start off a little bit easier. Keep them all the same, and that's one less thing i got to keep track of. So the shoot test says you need a fight skill, and you roll one die. So we're going to roll one die for this guy. He gets a plus one, and he's uh, he's got to end up with a five or better. So if he rolls a three, he's going to hit her. Okay, so there's a five. So he hits Kaylee for a blood, and this is not a good start. It wasn't very wise of me. I thought she was going to be out of line of sight. Um, I'm not sure what the heck I was thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and put one blood on her card. Um, so now that she has a blood on her card, she can't go back to casual until she heals. That's an, that's an interesting rule. And it makes sense. So you can't just all of a sudden, oh, you're going to attack me. Well, I guess I'll try to play it cool and uh, just hide over here. You got to heal up first. So now he's going to roll one more time. Oh, and he gets a firefly. And you know what? I'm, not, I'm going to take that roll over because they're supposed to roll the white dice, man. The, they're not brown coats. Look at that. See, and it's a miss. So he misses her the second time. And that's the way I'm playing it because you know why? Because it's my game. <laughs> so I'm going to put one blood on her for now. And we can attempt to heal that up later. And that'll be the goon's turn done. And he is... And that remember that took that was three shots or two shots and it takes three moments, so we should have changed it the first time. One, two, three. One, two, three. So he's way up here in the turn order, and he's the only one. Um, I guess that's the question now. Is whether or not this cowboy here? Let's go back to my overhead. If this cowboy here can see her as well. And I believe he can. Dang it. But you know, the funny thing is, I think she does get, I think she'll get cover. And I probably forgot to roll for cover on that last one. But that's fine. Let me take a look at that. All right. So I had to review the cover rules. So actually, when this guy was shooting initially, he needed a five. But Mal or um, Kaylee would have cover, so that adds three to the shooting test. So the five becomes an eight. So remember, he rolled a five, and he has a plus one because of his test. So that gives him a six, and that's it. But he needs an eight. So we're gonna take that blood off of um, Kaylee because that was a miss. And the second one was totally a miss because he's too far away. So now we're going to continue. And this other cowboy right here also has line of sight to her. So we're going to add him onto the timeline. And he's going to go ahead and take his shots. So for him, it's one, two, three, four, five. It's the same thing. He needs an eight or better. Um, and the only way they're really going to do that is if they get uh, an exploding die. Okay, there's a crit fail. So it's an automatic fail for the first shot. So he shoots again at her. This time he gets a four. And he needs an eight. 
he has a plus one for his fight skill or shooting skill or fight skill I was correct um, so it's two misses so you can see these guys are a little harmless as long as they're in range um, cover definitely is helping but uh, they're not gonna move any closer to make it easier so that's kind of cool that's something to know when you're when you're fighting against them is that it's okay to get uh, to trigger them if you got some distance because they're only going to move closer if they're out of range. So Kaylee's got the advantage here of some cover. And also, um, we took the blood off of her because that first one was actually a miss. Wow. Okay. So as you can see, let's go back to, if it'll let me change, behave. <laughs> Okay, so we go back to our timeline. So now we have one cowboy here and this guy, one, two, three, one, two. We basically have both cowboys up at number seven. They just went and they shot at Kaylee. So now the last person in the order is, it's a lot of frame, is Zoe. So Zoe's going to go next. We're going to figure out what she can kind of do um, to help the situation here. And what we're gonna do with Zoe, just taking a look at her card here off cam. So she starts as casual, just like everybody else. But she's gonna go ahead and move for two moments. She's actually right here. So she's gonna go, let me get a better angle for you. See if I can. So she's gonna go one, two, and then three. That's gonna actually put her out of line of sight to these goons that are back over here behind these buildings. It's important. So now Zoe is gonna actually flip over to her, her heroic mode. That's gonna give her a lot more options. It's gonna give her a brawl ability. Um, also a, a lot more fight buffs as well she's got three fight on her heroic so that means that when she uses her shoot action down here with a revolver she'll get plus three to her roll automatically her revolver requires one die and it, it's a two moment heroic ability so she's um she's going to switch to heroic so remember that's a it's what they call an anytime action you can perform it at any time um, let me see where she at. So we switch her over to her green miniature. By the way, the miniatures in this game, um, I my expectations were low. I've never gotten a Gale Force 9 product before. Um, but I've got to say that these things are just as good um, as you could expect. Um, they It moves out of the board gaming piece category. And it really, these are going to be fun to paint. Um, you know, they're fairly basic. They're not loaded with a tons of details, um, but they have enough. They're definitely good. I'm going to really enjoy these. The, the quality of these miniatures is what I was expecting uh, The Walking Dead No Sanctuary to be. And they were almost there with the No Sanctuary, just that they had shallow details. So, yeah. So anyhow, continuing is always turn. She has now moved, and that take uh, that takes her. Let me look at her card again. That takes two moments. So we need to move her on the track. One, two. Um. Now with her second action, she's going to go ahead and perform uh, a revolver shoot action. Right, right there. So this takes two moments. Let's just go ahead and move her. Move her two. That'll put her on top of Kaylee. And this shows she rolls one die. So we'll be rolling one die, and we look at the range, it's two away. So basically, she needs two or better to hit the cowboy. But I believe he's going to get cover because he's right next to the building. Um, let me double check that. Okay, I had to reread the rule just to double check because it basically, yes. Uh, this cowboy does not get cover. If she'd have been around the corner here, like Wash, 
he would get some cover if he shot from there. So, and actually, I had to waste a move to move. Uh, or, yeah, waste an action to move. If I would have kept her here, she could have shot at him, but he would have got um, a cover bonus. In addition, she'd be going heroic, and this guy over here would see her. So, yeah, I wanted to be a little bit more sneaky. A little sneaky sneak. So she went ahead. You can just see her over here. She's right right there, uh, one, two away. He gets no cover. So she's going to roll one die. And remember with her character card, she has a, a three fight skill. So she gets plus three. And let's take a look at her character card just to see if there's anything else we can do to guarantee some of her success. So, Heroic Zoe, where are you at, girlfriend? All right, there she is. So I could add, before shooting, add an extra skill per additional time spent. Uh, she's already got plus three. She only needs a two or better to hit him. So the only thing that's going to cause us a problem is if she rolls a critical fail. Um, and she doesn't have anything to really ignore that. Um, keep in mind that Wash um, now Wash can only if visible at any time, um, and he's not available any. Well, he is available, um, but it has to be a tech test. If available to a visible, no. Let me go back to his card, and I'll show you what I'm what I'm struggling with here. Um, wash casual so at any time if available add a die to a visible cru cruise test so wash could do this because he can see her and he technically is available because if you look in the timeline you can see his counter uh, where are you at right there so he's not covered up so he's available to assist with that particular skill. Um, but I don't think that we're going to do that. I don't think we really need to in this case. So, like I said, Zoe's got plus three. She's looking pretty good already. And, yeah, let's go ahead and roll it up. So she needs to get a two or better. Remember, he doesn't get any cover. Okay, so she gets a crit fail. All right, so no matter what, that's a fail. Even if she had like plus four, and I had rolled that extra dice, so that's important to know. If I had spent that other die, say, and rolled a two, plus her three fight skill, that would be enough to succeed in the range test, right? You would think. But because of the critical fail, it wasn't enough. So she fires off a round and misses. And that's it. That's going to take her, um, that costs her two moments, right? So that's expensive. That was an expensive miss. So she goes one, two on top of the Cowboys. All right. Well, that's kind of nice because they're not going to get to go. That means Zoe's going to probably get to shoot at him first unless something uh, causes them to move forward. Um, oh, and actually they do, right? Because it's the end of Zoe's turn. Um, and now this guy can see her. So that means he gets to go. What a bummer. So he's already in range. The first thing he's going to do is shoot. And we already know it takes him three moments. One, two, three. We'll go ahead and move that. So, and she's really close. So she's only two away. She gets no cover. And he has plus one. Ooh, this is not good. So pretty much she's going to get shot twice unless he rolls abysmally. So there's a five, so she takes a blood. And then with a, that cowboy second action, ooh, he gets a crit. Nice. So whew, got lucky with that one, I think. All right. So I need to take and put a blood on top of Zoe. So now Zoe is going to get stuck in heroic mode. Best that she can do is maybe 
dodge into one of these buildings when she gets rid of this dude. Now, interestingly to note, if anybody else could have seen her, then uh, they would have went as well. But if we take a look, there's um, there's a cowboy over here, but he's blocked by the corner of this building. His line of sight comes down. This guy can't see her. This one can't. So they're not really triggered by sound, which I'm sure when they were playtesting, they, they figured that out. That uh, even though that seems like something you'd want to add, that it would really kind of break the game. Because the way the AI mechanic, as far as visibility, it's pretty cool. So anyhow, the next person in the turn order, um, let's get this in frame for you. The next person in the turn order is uh, Mal. So now Mal needs to, he needs to help out Zoe for sure. Um, And you know, it's kind of funny. I could have, I forgot about this stupid card that Mal had. Mal has this card. For two moments, re-roll any one die of another crew's tech test. Maybe done at any time as long as the crew of the dinosaur is available. Now, and Mal was available during that. Um, so during her misses, I probably could have had a re-roll. It doesn't matter because it still would have only given the cowboy one wound, he still would have been around to shoot her again. So they do have two wounds. So not unless she has something to, to beef up her wound ability, and she doesn't. That revolver, revolver only does one wound. So back to Malcolm. Um, Malcolm's in casual mode, and he spends two moments. He can move three squares. So we take a look. One, two, three, and then I'll put him out of line of sight with the other cowboy. Put him right next to him. Oh, but see, if he does that, then he can't shoot. One, two, three. Bummer. All right. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious who, who they're going to shoot at. Probably the closest. They're both equidistant. So maybe if I go one, two, three. I guess I could fight him. I mean, he's got a two fight. So let's take a look at his capabilities here. This little camera zoom. My little... It's not working very well. <laughs> I got to get another rig, get some more parts on order. So if we switch him to heroic after the move, and we move him two on the moments for his movement. Um, yeah, he's got a two fight skill. Um, the funny thing though is that Zoe could, oh man, he's just in a bad state. One, two. One, two, three. All right. So what he's going to do is he's going to go one, two, three. He's going to move right next to him like that. He's going to engage. So he is also going to change to heroic mode for free. And that's him right here. So he is now heroic. And, yep, you can see there's his heroic figure. Sorry about that. And he's got one more action left, so he's going to perform this brawl. So now you get to see what happens when you do some fisticuffs, right? Can't always shoot. If uh, I don't have an option to shoot right now because I'm adjacent. So if you're right next to him, you can't shoot. Um, so he's got a two-fight skill. If he spends two moments, he can brawl. And that's the only way you can fight hand-to-hand. -hand. You have to either have a piece of equipment that allows you to brawl, which will be in yellow bold, or on your card it says brawl. So actually Jane has brawl in casual mode, which is pretty cool. Um, but I think he's the only one. Everyone else has to be heroic. So back to Mal. 
So he's going to roll one dice for this test. And you basically we're doing an opposed roll. So he rolls one die. The cowboy gets one die. And Mal's going to get plus two because he has a two fight skill on his card. And that's all. Um, there's nothing else I can really do on his card to buff him up. But I say nothing else he can do. But now... Uh, darn it. I thought Zoe could... <laughs> I was hoping Zoe could assist him. That's why I moved him where I did. Um, but Zoe... Doesn't say anything on here about assisting in heroic mode. Interesting. So, that's weird because I thought you could assist. I thought you could assist her in combat. So I'm going to do a rule check on that. Because I'm not seeing a, I'm not seeing like a Jane's card here. When he's in heroic mode, it says assist if available. But then in heroic, it doesn't say assist. So it might be automatic that you're allowed to assist. So I got to double check this rule. All right, so I went ahead and double checked the rule. And so basically, Mal is acting heroic when he's doing his brawl. So they make a differentiation in this game where if you're assisting, you have to be in the same mode that the active character that's doing the action is. So Mal's heroic. In order for anybody to assist him, Zoe would have to be heroic. Well, she's also in heroic mode. However, to perform an assisting, you ha it has to list it on your card or on, a, uh, on your character card or on a piece of equipment, right? So as in Wash right here says, assist if available. So it's a long way of saying that Zoe cannot uh, assist him in this brawl action, which is unfortunate, but it's true. So now what we do is we roll one die, and it's going to be brown, the brown coats for Mal, and the Cowboys is the white die. And we're doing an opposed roll. So uh, Mal rolls a three, and the Cowboy rolls a four. However, Mal has two fight. And the cowboy has one. So that's going to be a tie. So I think in the case of a tie, they both... <laughs> that's a bad roll. I believe they both uh, take a wound. Da-da-da-da-da. Feels a wound. Yep. So we both take a wound. So I need to take a wound marker and place it... I'm just going to place it on the map next to this cowboy because we're going to we're going to take him down in a minute. So, and that's another that's a wound for Mal. So we'll put one on his card. So right now, as far as a wound situation, uh, Zoe has a wound, Mal has a wound, and we ended up getting into the action quite quite quickly. And I was trying to avoid that, <laughs> but I forgot that uh, that Kaylee was visible through the doorway there. So what I really should have done is had Kaylee come all the way in and then had Wash move into the building and then he could have assisted her in all these actions, but yet nobody could see her acting heroically because she would be one space inside the building that would take her out of the doorway and she would have the benefit of the building to eliminate visibility, if that makes sense. So you can see the game is very fun. It's very thematic. It will take you a little bit to get used to the rules. So they, I wouldn't call them clunky. I think that it's very well designed. I think some people may call it clunky just because there are so many little tiny rules. But honestly, they're rules that just they need to be there. So it's interesting. It's You have games that are designed. They're extremely streamlined by like high-end game designers. And then there's games that you feel like a regular gamer made, but he did everything that just made sense. And that's kind of what this fits into, if that makes any sense. So it, it's how I would design it, I think. You know, I would be adding these little things in, these little tiny rules that make sense, that in the beginning are like, oh, why is that there? That's, 
I have to remember this and I have to remember that. Yeah, there's a lot to remember, but it uh, it's got a good payoff. So anyhow, back to the turn. So Mel went ahead and moved, and then he did a brawl action, which takes him two, uh, two more. So I'm going to move him up on the time track, and that's going to cover up Kaylee on the number five slot. So let me get uh, my ghetto rig back in place here. <laughs> All right. So that means Jane is next. Um, oh, actually, he's not. Um, because the cowboy can see, let me go back to the screen. The cowboy can see him at the end of his turn. You got to perform this check. And if that happens, that cowboy's token is placed. And I believe it was this guy, wasn't it? Yep, it's placed at the very end. So before Jane goes, that's how it works. So if it moves from here all the way down here, the back of the order. So that means that the cowboy goes next. So now the cowboy gets to get some retribution for what Mal was putting down on him, right? So now if we look at the cowboy card, um, I do believe if next to a crew, he will brawl. So it's a three moment action and it's a one dice attack. So basically we're gonna get into a brawl again. One, two, three. Now this time Mal doesn't have to spend anything to defend himself, but he still has the same buffs that he had before, right? So let me move over here for the dice roll. I'm actually glad that this helipad's part of the, uh, the layout so I have somewhere to roll the dice. Because that other view is just, it's a Chinese webcam and I just can't get the lighting right on it, it looks horrible. So we're gonna roll this opposed test. Oh no, this is bad news. So the cowboy gets a firefly, which is an exploding die. So he gets a six plus a five. Ooh, that's an 11. He's gonna beat Mal. Mal gets four plus a two. So Mal's taking another wound. This is not good. Um, damn, son. Um, and what makes matters worse <laughs> is this cowboy gets two actions. So he gets to do this all over again. So Mal, I think, might have bit a little more than he thought he could than he could chew. Look at that. So another exploding die and a crit. Ooh. Now, to be fair, the cowboy had to roll that again. Our, yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna leave it as stands. So he could have cho chosen to re-roll that crit, uh, the firefly. Right, and actually he probably shouldn't have, and we're gonna keep it at that, because that's six. Mal rolled a three and he's got two. So if this was a human opponent, he would have not re-rolled this for fear of getting what he did, which was the crit. So we're gonna keep the firefly symbol. We'll give Mal another wound, which is not good. One more wound and Mal goes down. And I have not, lost a character yet, so I'm not even sure what happens, um, if that happens. I think, I think they go out of action and, I don't know, I have to review the rules, because <laughs> I haven't, haven't come across that yet. So, let's take a look at the turn order. Now, that one cowboy has to go up one, two, three again for that second attack. And now we go to Jane. So Jane, looking at all his peeps over here that are getting their butts handed to him, he pulls his hood over his head. He's like, Ugh, I guess I've got to take care of this for you. <laughs> He's one of my favorite characters. So Jane, if we looked at his character card, he, uh, just like everybody, he, he's a little slower. Uh, three moments to move three squares for him. So one, two, three, he can get within brawling range here. Just like so. The good news is that he doesn't actually have to change. He could stay right in casual mode, which I think we're going to do because, uh, let's see, corner. Let me draw a line of sight here to double check this. Corner to corner. Yeah, he would be in line of sight with this goon over here if he switches. And I don't want to trigger yet another goon's movement. Um, these guys are kicking my butt. 
So he's going to stay in casual mode and hopefully deal out this last wound. Um, so he can brawl for two moments, but first we need to move him on our track here. One, two, th uh, one, two, three will be on top of Wash. Show you that. So Jane moves from one. This is his first move up to there. And yeah, so now he's going to spend two more moments to do a brawl action. Oh, this is something weird. If hidden from goons other than target. That's weird. If hidden from goons. Okay, I think I figured it out. That's some, that's some strange wording. But basically what it means is if you're hidden from, from goons, from other goons, other than the target of your brawl action, which is with the case here, uh, Mal's in gray. He's targeting this goon. He cannot be seen from any other goon. Now, corner to corner is not enough. So I'm pretty sure everybody else is out of range. Oh, but he... Oh. Remember, we've already ascertained that this dude around the corner here uh, from any point... I think he can actually see him. Gosh darn it. So... Uh. So he can't actually do that brawl action because he can't be seen by other people to do that casually. So pretty much what that means is he, for free, he's just going to have to switch over here to heroic. Everybody's going heroic. Friends are in danger. Get them. All right. So he switches for free. I'll flip over his counter. And he actually gets an extra fight skill now. And that's pretty much it. He can add an extra two moments if he wants to add an extra die to his brawl. But he's already getting plus three. Um, Mal. Yeah, it's weird. Um, it says in the rules that you can assist... Uh, a brawl but the weird thing about it is it also says that, you know it has to say it on the card that you can assist so maybe there'll be another character they come out with that can do that but now Jane can do it in casual so somebody could could assist him if they had a brawl right so basically I guess the gist of it is if you have equipment that allows you to brawl you can kind of help each other out and you know casually knock these dudes out but once you go heroic you pretty much can't assist each other like Kaylee could here she's in heroic mode assist if available um, so if she had something that gave her a brawl ability she could do it so that's interesting but I guess that makes sense it's thematic because Wash wasn't really a fighter so like if he was heroic let's, t let's take a check at him heroic Oh, no, he'd be able to assist. All right. So I guess he could knock him on the head if he was heroic. <laughs> so anyhow, sorry. Um, he does not get an assist. But I think what we're going to do is go ahead and take advantage of Jane's ability here. And he's got a, for plus two extra moments, he's going to roll an extra die. His original brawl costs two. And he's pretty far back on the time track. So this is going to cost him four. One, two, three, four. To roll two brown coat dice. And going against the opposed roll of one. Oh, no. Look at that. It's a classic example. Okay. So the enemy rolled a three. We rolled a firefly, which is exploding die, plus a crit. In this example, these two things cancel out. So this crit is ignored, but it counts as one, right? This Firefly counts as six. So we re-roll. Didn't even need to. Um, actually, it was risky that I did. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we definitely beat him on the opposed roll. And we're going to give this dude his final wound, which is going to take him out. So he is troubling us no more. Thank you, Jane. Actually, that one cowboy... He gave us a run for our money. He, he doled out some wounds. 
uh, Mal with three shot Zoe. That dude was uh, one bad character. So, all right. So where are we at? So now Jane has completed his two actions. Jane is heroic. And this guy here can actually see him, believe it or not, because he can draw he can draw a line from his zone to his zone. Corner to corner, if that's all you can get, that doesn't count, but you can get more. So he's definitely visible. He would have cover though. Um two, one, two, three, four. Five, five, six. So he's within range. I think he's five. One, two, th actually four. One, two, three, four. He's four away. So basically, this dude's going to fire at him twice because he's like, ah, I see what you did. <laughs> so he's going to aggro to him, basically. So he's still just a regular, he's a cowboy. And he has a one fight roll uh, with a plus one. Um, but there, uh, Jane will have cover because there is obstructing terrain in his way, right? So he's going to get some cover. So it's a plus three to the roll. So one, two, three, four, he needs a seven. So basically this, this thug needs a six to get him. Oh my God. And he rolls a six. One, two, three, four. He's got plus one, so he doesn't even have to re-roll it. He has plus one, he hits him. Damn it. <laughs> so Jane gets shot. That's what that's what you get, man, for helping a brother out. So he gets a wound, and this cowboy's going to take another shot. This time he gets a four, and that's not going to cut the mustard because of Jane's cover. So Jane gets a, a bullet shot. Things are not going well for the crew. They showed up. We've eliminated one building. We run into some serious trouble with this one thug. Shots are fired. We're bleeding all over the place. Man, everybody's basically bleeding except for Kaylee, who's in the building, and Wash, who he's just he's the only one not in heroic mode. <laughs> so there's been a lot of action here early on. This is this has been fun. So that's the end of the cowboy's turn. We need to move him up on the time track. He took two shots. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, I'm not quite certain. We have to remove the one because we killed him. Um, here, there's an event thing that happens, and I'm not sure if, if the enemies trigger that from happening. I'm going to have to do a rule check. Okay, so double checking the rule in the book, and the term they use is crew member. So when a crew member actually hits this space right here with the star, then we do the special event, which in this case means our hostage starts to bleed out. We lose one of their wounds. In this particular mission, we have, we have five time trackers going around the board, right? So once we get off of this time tracker, we've lost it. So, um, yeah, we, we don't want to run out of time. And also, the measure of our success is going to be how fast, how much time we use. So we kind of want to get in here, find the hostage, and get out before utilizing so much time we get paid more, right? So anyhow, the question was whether or not the cowboy triggered the event here on this time sequence card thing, and it didn't. So now we're going to move on. The next person in the turn order so we look in the very back, it's gonna be Wash. So Wash is the next dude to go. Wash is up here in the middle, trying to help Kaylee out. So, kind of wondering, um, to, to, to do, I think Wash, he can spend two moments to move, and he gets to move three. So he'll go one, two, and three, he'll move into the building here. Okay, let's move him up on the time tracker, so that'll move him to position six. And then I believe he might attempt this tech test. Um, he only has 
pull this card up here wash casual right so he just did a movement for two moments he only has if you look on the left he only has one blue wrench so he gets a plus one um, to any visible cruise test so I wonder if he could add a die to his own test I mean he is visible he probably could buff himself if it was a heal it would be the same thing so he might be able to add but that's a lot of time for him to burn plus he's got to spend the time of the test itself <clears throat> and I think Kaylee uh, no she uh, yeah she can you look at her card here it says even heroic she can assist if available for two moments so but she's actually oop, she's not available if we look down here she's underneath Malcolm so she's not available to assist so that means wash is gonna have to do it himself so because of that he's gonna go ahead and spend he's gonna spend more moments to try to get this successful so let's go ahead and we're gonna grab the next card on there and this says dusty busted turbine okay so he can choose uh, well he's currently casual it cost four moments and he needs an eight or he could switch to heroic which I think that's what he's gonna do um, as far as I know switching to heroic is free ooh but maybe we won't because if he does that he loses all those great buffs he has so no he's gonna stay casual all right so he needs an eight and it's gonna cost four moments so we'll take wash and go one two three four we hit that event and also he's gonna spend another three moments to add a die to his test one two three and cover up that cowboy so let's resolve this test before we do that event um, so he's gonna roll two dice and he needs an eight or better and he has a plus one to the roll and that's it so let's see what we get here um, get over here to a visible area oh he gets a crit so he fails so let's see what happens when he fails uh, basically it just cost one extra moment so nice try wash so we went ahead and moved him up he's on the next time segment on the number four slot so that's unfortunate because I wanted to be able to expose another one of these buildings with his turn but that didn't work so so be it anyhow he's still casual and he is here available to help out Kaylee when she does her searching um, and unfortunately because of this one goon that can see her from the doorway yeah see this guy already shot so uh, you know now technically at the end of Wash's turn if this guy yeah that's how it works if this guy can see well he would be activated but since he's all the way over here on the time tracker he doesn't get to go again I'm pretty sure that's how that works all right so I had to do a rule clarification and yeah I was worried that all of a sudden that that one goon here was now gonna get to fire on her but remember he'd already done that and that placed him up on the time track so basically at the event end of every turn of your heroes you have to check and make sure that you're not going to activate a goon that's not currently on your time track so we do have this guy in our time track this goon all the way down here cannot see Kaylee and either can the two that are here and here let me tighten my little rig up here it's getting wobbly so all right um so yes the next in order is going to be Malcolm so if we look at here at the turn track you can see Malcolm down here he's in the back of the pack he is located on top of Kaylee so Kaylee will be after him 